Hi everyone. Let's see, I am going to, I'm just putting a tag, a little um, pin in the front here so you guys can see who I am and then I'm gonna do an official introduction of myself, so. Oh wow, so many people are tuning in already. Thank you. Oh wow. Um, okay, oh there we go. Fabulous, okay, thank you for your patience. Hi everyone, all right. Um, so I'm very excited tonight to come to you live from Roundup, Montana. I live in a small little town in Montana, and my name is Koala Evans. I'm an oil painter here in Montana. So I'm so grateful to Leah from Boot Barn uh, for reaching out to me last week to invite me to participate in this event called Create the West. Uh, it's a really cool thing. I don't know if you've been following along or not, but it's a really cool thing that they're doing, featuring um, different artists and artisans and musicians. Um, Yesterday there was a musician on, and the other day there was um, Ben Christensen, Christensen, and he's a wonderful photographer. So he was on, and I got to watch both of their live streams. Wonderful. And there's a great lineup coming up this week, and um, Colter Wall is one of them. So I'm going to pull my phone, and then I'll tell you. I'll give you a lineup. So anyway, oh my gosh, people are tuning in from Mexico. I'm still getting, giving everybody uh, a minute to tune in who wants to come in, um, show up and see me and ask me some questions. But again, I'm an oil painter, and I'm here in my studio tonight in Roundup, Montana. And I'm gonna step out of the way so you can see uh, part of my studio. Um, they asked me to they asked me to talk about myself a little bit um, to let you know who I am and uh, and what I do. And I'm I'm trying to like get settled in and and figure out exactly what I want to tell you first. I've been thinking about it all day, so. I think I'm gonna start with props and showing you just a little bit of my work. Hi, Carolyn, how are you? Oh, I see somebody from Connecticut. What's next in the house? So, um, okay, so I'm gonna show you some props and, and a couple of paintings. And I think I'm gonna have to bring them over to you. I saw somebody do that. I was trying to set it up so you could see everything. Uh, I have a really cool bison skull on the wall, so I'll show you that in a minute. But I'm gonna start in by showing you some of my props. I, uh, I like to paint a lot of landscapes and portraits um, and some historical work. I create a wide range of work. I've got multiple bodies of work going on. And so a couple things that I'm working on now is not what I'm gonna be painting for you tonight. But um, this particular piece that I'm working on currently, uh, I have some props for. They're from the 1800s and I really, I really like that a lot. So I'm gonna show you my I'm gonna show you my fancy little Stetson. Matt, man, you love my, this hat? Thank you, Kate Hapstad made that. It's wonderful, I'm gonna tell you all about it in a second. So this right here is my first Stetson hat that I've ever had, and it definitely won't be my last. It's one of these little numbers, and it has, here's my little tag. I'm gonna show you this. This is pretty impressive. The original price tag is in it of $15. So the reason why I'm showing you this is I bought this hat, I don't know, probably 20 years ago, and I bought it for $15 for the original price tag, and I've carried it with me for a long time. I wasn't always a painter. I've been a painter for about five years, and that's been my primary focus. So like in my old life, I started off as a hair colorist. I was a hair colorist for 13 years. Then I started a massage therapy business, but I've lived here in Montana for about 15 years now. I grew up in Texas. And, um, and so I've, I have strong Western influence. I have strong country ties. And so this hat I've been carrying around for 20 years. And so it's made it into a lot of my photo shoots do all my own photo shoots. I try to, sometimes I uh, get permission to use reference photos, but um, do my own photo shoots and I like to incorporate historical props. Would love to have my suits in your stores. Oh, 
you are for a boot barn. Um, I'm not, I'm a painter, so you're definitely gonna have to che uh, check in with uh, boot barn for that. Hi, Red Raider, how are you? Okay, so you guys are really sweet for bearing with me while I, while I kind of get grounded in this. I've never, I've gone live for my own audience before, but I've never gone live for another audience, so this is, a, this is really nice. You are a cowboy out in the West. Where do you live, Matt? You live in a Yarta Yartega, is that how you say that? Did I say hi, Red Raider? How are you? It's good to see you. So yeah, Red Raider, you knit. Didn't, it use, didn't your handle used to say Red Raider Knits? So, okay. Um, so I've got my hat and this gets me thinking a lot about history. I study a lot of history when I'm working in the studio like through audiobooks, and um, so that has begun to influence some of my work. So I'm gonna show you this, these props. This is a really cool uh, garment. Because of my old days of being a hair colorist, I, I um, got to do a lot of fashion shows and did a lot of photo shoots, and so that has really helped me with doing my work today. So this is a really cool um, silk cape. It's also from the late 1800s. It's called a morning cape. And then this top right here, can you see that okay? There's really cool uh, buttons and lace and these are all silk from the late 1800s, early 1900s. So I've been listening to audiobooks um, that take place in that time frame. Um, they're historical fiction and some of them are nonfiction. So that's, that's really nice. I like to incorporate that into my work. So I'm gonna show you this painting. It's in progress. I thought tonight I would show you different paintings and different stages of progress. So, and probably in like, I don't know, 10 minutes, I'm gonna chat a little bit more. I'm gonna say hi. Hi, Robert from Illinois. How are you? And Maria from California. So let me know if y'all have any questions. Are any of you painters out there? No replies. Okay, so let me turn this light. So this is a painting I have going in progress right here. You dabble, Matt, that's great. Electric space wizard you're trying to be. Tell me, what are you painting? Like acrylic or oil or watercolor? Sometimes I do a little bit of both. Um, so this painting I'm working on, like if I'm, if I'm going somewhere and I can't bring all my oil paints, I do travel. I'm going to show you my plein air kit. That's pretty cool. So if I'm going to be traveling, I don't, sometimes I take a watercolor journal and that's pretty, that's pretty easy to, and compact. It's easy to carry around or I take my sketchbook. I always try to uh, do that. So I'm going to be showing you my sketchbook pretty soon of a, I don't know. Shoot, I didn't bring, I got so many things ready. I wasn't sure exactly what I was gonna be talking to you about, but I wanted to be prepared and I didn't uh, bring my sketch for this. So I often do preliminary sketches. So that's why it's good to like take your sketchbook and your watercolor book around. Um, Cause that way you can do like little field notes and um, you know, maybe like take literal notes in your, in your sketchbook. So that way it helps you decide on like what your future piece will be. So this painting is in progress. It's for an upcoming Rose show at Montana Gallery. That's where I'm represented. It's about 50 miles away from my studio. And see Matt, your, your brothers are true artists. They use all sorts of inks and paints. That's awesome, good, Thomas said hi. So anyway, I don't know if you can see this okay, but I like to paint in a lot of layers. Lots of transparency. This painting, thank you, Nico, thank you. Um, I like to, it takes me a while to paint. I might work on a painting for say like, I'm gonna show you what I've been working on for a year and a half, but I could, sometimes I can do them pretty quickly in a few weeks, but most of the time, um, it, it can take me six months or eight months or a year because I really like to sit with something for a long time. If I'm, uh, if I'm gonna turn it out into the world, I really want to sit with it for a while. And for a lot of years, I didn't do that. I was more of like a la prima approach. Um, do you know what a la prima is? Uh, a la prima is like in one sitting. 
So you're just doing it on that day for three hours or four hours or however long, and then it's over with. And so for the last few years, I've been trying to train myself to not do that. So I've been doing a lot of um, more classical uh, approaches to my work. So um, again, I've been painting for, I've been serious about painting for five years. I'm not formally trained. I'm largely self-taught. Uh, I have studied with a handful of different instructors. And let's see, Matt, you're asking Alla Prima. Um, I don't know if you got to hear me, but Alla Prima is like just, you know when you see somebody like that's painting, like if they're outside painting, that would mean Alla Prima. Or if you're having a live model sit for them and they're only painting them for that night, that's Alla Prima. Again, I'm not so formally trained, so I there's a proper definition for that, and I'm not giving. <laughs> I don't. I don't have the proper definition, but it's just basically in one sitting is is what that means. You're just doing it in like in say a three or four hour period of time. So I Leah, I am going to paint in just a minute. I've got a longhorn on the easel. So anyway, this lady right here is going to go on to tell a story. She's going to be in a show, and I'm going to show you. She's going to be in a show coming up in May. And I've got another um, portrait that I really like. Have you guys ever heard of Princess Angeline? So this is a historic uh, painting that was made. It's referenced from a photograph that Edward S. Curtis, um, he made a photograph of her, like I think it was in the late 1800s. I read a book called Short Nights of the Shadow Catcher. I'm gonna show you a portrait of him. But I started doing these portraits because I have a story that I wanna tell. Um, and so I'm just building up my studies. So this is considered a study. Eventually, I will go on to paint this on copper. So this is Princess Angeline. Um, and a fun fact is she is the daughter of Chief Seattle. That's not how you pronounce his name, but that is how Seattle, Washington, that's how they, they came up with the name for um, Seattle. So. Anyway, ah, thank you. So I like to also, I'm gonna show you some materials here in a second. I'm gonna show you one other thing and then I'm gonna get over to my paints and my supplies and you can ask me questions there. So. And while I'm unwrapping this, I'll take a look. Do you have any questions for me? Hi, is it? Is your name uh, Ileana and Nicole, Isha Nicole, is that your name? Hi, thank you, I appreciate that. So I'm gonna show you these. I just got finished doing these. These are my Lady Longhorn series. Again, I'm working on multiple bodies of work. Quite a bit of my work is influenced from the West. Um, I live out here in the West, so here's one of my Lady Longhorns. You ever look at a longhorn and you always think they're a bull? So, my coins steady with anyone. I'm, ma I'm married to an artist and he's a wonderful woodworker. So, there are these, let's see, there's three of them and I'm gonna be making two more. So, thank you. All right, um, let's see, do I wanna show, do you guys wanna see this? Are any of you hunters? If you're hunters, I'm gonna show you something, but if you're not, tell me no, and I'm not gonna show you anything. How, oh, that is a great question. Thanks for asking, Rising Leo. Um, how do we find your artwork? So my name's Koala Evans. I've got my name pinned at the top, so if you go there, you can see that. Uh, you can Google my name. I'm here on Instagram under Koala Evans. Um, spelled just like that. It's easy to find me. And um, my website is koalaevans.com. So just like it's spelled. So, all right. Let's see. So did you see? Oh, you want to see it. Okay. So this I'm working on. It's a painting in progress. Um, this is this is one that I was telling you. It's taken me about a year and a half to make. And I'm almost finished. So I'm working on her mouth right here. And... Carolyn, you're so good. Thanks for being patient while I get it together here. I kind of forgot everything I was gonna say at first. So, I'm gonna show you part of my sketchbook. 
So I've been working on her mouth and sometimes mouths are kind of tough for me. So you can see it's not finished. And then I've been, can you, s there. So I've been doing little studies just to try to get that down. Thanks, Carolyn. I am really excited to share this when it's finally finished. I've hardly shown it at all, and there's a really special title that goes with it, and I think it's pretty timely for these days. So, um, you know, it's all food related. Let's see, what else can I show you on this side? Because once I move you over here, then it's over with. I mean, this part is over. I don't want to go back and forth. So are you guys ready to see some paint and some tools and ask me some questions? Okay, great. I am going to move this right over. And the lighting's gonna be better. You're gonna like this a lot nicer. Let's see. There. All right. Look at that guy. Yes, oh good. Maybe I should have done the paintings last. I don't know, but I felt like once I started painting this guy or you can let me know. I, I can start a new one, but I got this ready for you the other day. So anyway, I feel like once I started painting this that you weren't going to want to go see those things. So, okay. Let's see. I think I'm going to show you. I am going to show you. I need to show you some tools first. This is really important. So I'm gonna show you a few of my favorite paintbrushes. And this guy. Look how long that is. It's got like lots of nice flex. So this is called an extra long filbert and it's made by Robert Simmons. I really like this when I'm doing plein air painting. And actually, hold on one second. I needed to get this for when for when I do that part of my talk. So I do, do you guys know what plein air painting is? Like when you're out painting in a, painting in the field or you're doing a landscape or whatever. So um, I do that a lot before I come back to the studio to paint because um, it's important to train your eye. And the best way to train your eye is painting from life because you get to see like different subtle uh, color nuances and different um, shifts like the plains of a face or the plains of a mountain. Uh, so my goal is always to give a little bit more form and to have something um, more rep very representational that has, has lots of depth of field. So I would say like I'm a little bit contemporary and a little bit traditional. So, okay, so I wanna show you this right here. I'm really proud of this piece. It's just a little plein air piece, but I painted this last March and it was seven, I think it was like seven degrees or minus seven. I looked it up the other day and now I forgot. So it was cold and there were tons of snow and lots of cows. These cows were all pregnant. They were getting ready to calve out. And so I like to go, I'm in the studio a lot. So this is a way that I get to go outside and get fresh air and um, just get, get out of doors. So I did this piece last year and this is another painting that I did from life. I tromped through the snow, I had some big work boots on and um, I tromped through the snow to get to this spot. So this is actually at my family's place and I love this golden willow. It's right on the creek bed and then you can see a little historic structure uh, back there. So anyway, so I use a lot of um, this type of brush when I'm painting these. But when I'm starting a brand new painting, I also will use this type of brush so I can keep, keep, keep the painting a little, like a little loose so it's not just a tight drawing. Sometimes I do begin with a drawing like I showed you in the sketchbook, but otherwise I start, um, I kind of start different every time, but um, today I'm also gonna start by doing a painting first. Like I'm gonna do my drawing with paint. So instead of doing graphite drawing. So what do you think? Do you want me to paint, like to keep painting this guy? Or do you want me to paint this cute little guy? If I paint him, I'm just gonna paint a little portrait. 
I know that there's about a 30 second delay, so I'll wait a second and see what you think. And in the meantime, I'm gonna show you what else I paint on. So one thing that's really important to me is having my work be archival, which means that it'll survive. Like short of a flutter of fire, it should survive. You know, so I really like to paint on a rigid substrate. And that's what this is here. So for some of my really special works, I paint on copper. This piece right here is a 16 by 20, and it's for a special uh, commission portrait that I'm going to be doing. So there's that. And let's see, here's another size. I'm not gonna be painting on this for you today because the process is totally different. It takes me a lot longer and I can't draw on this panel. I have to actually paint on it and really like work the painting out uh, that way. So um, let's see, so there's that. And Let's see, I don't think you guys Oh good, there's some work. Let's see. Oh, electric space with um I see that now. Sorry, these comments weren't popping up. I couldn't see them. Um happy for Russell's blizzard painting. That is really nice compliment. Thank you. That one, the longhorn, the one you already got, Longhorn. The little guy is your vote. Hi Andy, how are you? I'm just scrolling through these now. They were popping up like crazy and now they're not. So I'm sorry I'm missing you. You love all my cattle paintings, Carolyn. Thank you. All right. Um, I'm not sure what your handle is. M-G-L-E-Z-S-S-F. Your wife would love the hat. It's uh, Kate Havstad. Um, she's on Instagram, Havstad Hats. She's amazing. So this hat, it's a pretty special hat. When I went full time a year and a half ago, like I set a goal for two years, um, and that's really important for me, like as an artist, you know, because as a painter and I'm working and making my living, um, doing commissions and selling paintings and stuff, I set goals for myself, and like so, I buy a lot fewer things, um, but they're really good things, and so this is this is one of them, and I'll show you. I'll show you the inside. I really love it. So, um, and Carolyn that's on there, I, I got my horse from her. I didn't know I was getting a horse, so this hat was being made when I found out I was getting my horse. I named him Santiago. And um, anyway, so I asked Kate to put this in there. Can you see? See that handsome horse? So anyway, it was a pretty big deal. He's gonna be going to get trained soon. I've never had my own horse. And it's pretty exciting, so. All right. Um, let me see. You love my paintings, thank you. Thank you very much, Jackson. You guys, thanks for the compliments. I really appreciate it. Okay, well, it sounds like I, I was really excited. I haven't gotten a paint on this surface before. This is made by um, Artifacts. They're out of California. And this is called an oleo, um, an oleo panel. It's a, a lead primed panel. So I was hoping to get to paint on this for you tonight. But if you follow me on Instagram, I'll paint on this for you another day. So, all right, I'm gonna talk to you a little bit about my setup. And then we're gonna get started here. So this right here is called a New Wave. It's the brand is uh, New Wave Palette. And they're made on the East Coast. I really like to support as many US companies as I can. That's really important to me. So um, this, the, the guys that made this, they just started making them a couple of years ago. So for any of you guys who want to be doing plein air or get out in the field and do plein air work, um, this right here is a great little, is a great little deal. I mean, this just comes out. Did you see that? It has magnets, so anyway. All right, oh my gosh, I am chatting way too much. So I'm gonna stop and I'm gonna paint for you, okay? I didn't realize what time it is, sorry. So, 
going to use my, my paints here. This is called a transparent red oxide. And I'm going to use um, ultramarine blue. These are both made by Williamsburg Paint. They're made in New York. They're all handmade paints. This ring, thank you. Um, my husband got this for me about 10 years ago and I finally grew into like wearing it like I wear it almost every day now. So I used to only wear it for special occasions. Do you wear turquoise? What kind of jewelry do you wear, Eve? I'm gonna just show you my reference photo there, um, but I think when I'm painting, you won't be able to see it as well. So, <gasps> Greg, oh my gosh, hi. Did you find cell reception? I mean, obviously you did. So how is your, how was moving cows today? Was it good? Okay. All right. And happy anniversary. I saw your lovely post today about your wife. That was really sweet. Okay. Can you see okay? You actually need to get some jewelry. Well, I think you're on the right site for that. Let's see, you want me to scoot in? Let's try that. I just wanna set this up so you can see it pretty well. Sorry about that. Hi, Leah. Thank you. I love painting the Longhorns. They're so fun and I love cows. All right. So mostly you're just gonna be able to see my hand. So I like to paint and then I look back. Also going to be using some of this. This is a great medium. Uh, it helps give me lots of body and texture. Or helps give my paint lots of body and texture. You were waving like a fangirl. Oh, I you're so cute. And so is your wife. She is beautiful. Her and your daughter. Can you see that okay? There you go. Your hat man, thanks. This is uh, made by Roadside Remedies. Uh, Kate Havstad works with her quite a bit. There, hopefully it's not too glary. So tell me how you're all doing at home. Oh, you can see it well, good. I really, I really appreciate you guys uh, spending time with me tonight. It's a little blurry. Oh, that's better. All right.
can you can I share my inspiration? This is Leah. You're so you're so smart. Um, yes, my inspiration is definitely from living out here in Montana, and you know, there's a lot. I live in an agricultural community. There's lots of ag and coal and oil. Um, lots of industry here. I mean, as far as like those types of industry, and so um, I married into a family that. They used to raise cows, and now they they lease pasture, so I'm around a lot of cows. I don't work with them directly, but I go and I get to take a lot of photos. So um, I go to brandings. I haven't been, I haven't gotten to go to a branding in a while, and I don't know if I'll get to go this year. You guys, are any of you like? Do any of you work with cattle? Are you ranchers? What do you all do? So, um, talking, you have horses and chickens. That is, we've got a lot of people out here with horses and chickens. This is definitely, definitely a ranching community. So being living out here in uh, rural Montana, like as we're about 50 miles away from the nearest city, you know, I get to see a lot of, of livestock and, um, you know, you get to see them and you can start to, you know, you can start to see different things. Like, you know, some people really read, like to raise red Angus or black Angus. I have a friend that raises the, uh, Coriente cow and breeds them with like a Charlet. It's fascinating. So I get to go out to his place and and learn about his breeding program and and um, I it, It's so interesting to get to learn about all the different um, breeds of cows. It's not something that I know how to talk about but um, I'm very interested in it and so a lot of times I'm, I paint so I can learn something, you know, like when I was showing you those historical uh, props that I used back there, sometimes I wear them, but you know, I like to learn about them and like what, what was happening in history during those days. So same thing with the cows, like I don't know a lot about them, but I'm learning more about them and I really like that. So let's see, you're doing some light ranching right now just west of Dulce. Is it Dulce, Dulce or Dulce? I bet it's Dulce on um, New Mexico. From Brazil, and somebody's tuning in from Brazil. Hi. So, Greg, I have a question for you. I saw in that photo, so Greg is a sculptor and he was in the photo that they used to help promote this uh, Create the West um, series, and he was sculpting a horse from life. This, you can see this horse just blazing through the background. So, is that something you usually do? Or I wanna, I'm curious about that. I think you need to get, oh, Dulce. That one was good. How do you explain that? Dulce. Okay, I have to stand back a little bit. So what do you think about that? So I like to try to like paint and draw with um, real like big shapes and then start to really narrow it down by putting the darker, darker tones in there. And I start a lot of my paintings this way. It's called indirect painting. So you start with um, kind of a monochromatic painting and then you can add in color. And I don't like to paint with a ton of color. Even though it kind of looks like it back there, it's really not a lot of bright color.
kind of quiet in here, huh? I was going to try to get some um, light music playing in the background, but I ran out of time. My trusty um, rosemary brush, my mop brush here. So I'm just filling in like wherever I see like the dark marks. Let me show you here. So see right here. I'm looking at all all the dark. Hold on one second. I want that. I had to get my, my mug, you'll know, like this. So one of my friends, Steven Degenhart, made this mug. It has a great little horse and bowl on it. Oh, do I travel? Um, actually, hi Nico. Sorry, I didn't see these uh, comments coming in, so I'm sorry I'm being so slow to answer them. Do I travel? Does travel inspire me? Yes, I do travel. I actually got to go to Ecuador uh, in February. That was pretty exciting. Early February before everything got crazy, and I saw a really cool uh, cattle herder. Um, I got some great photos of that. So, let's see. Wow, I did not know that you got to sculpt from life. Greg, let's see. So when you sculpt from life, are you sculpting? Well, I know you sculpt people, but like you're, yeah, so the horses, that is impressive. I want to see that. Isha, thank you for uh, for your comments. You always have to have the TV on the paint. It is so quiet. I am used to listening to audiobooks all the time. Uh, if I listen to music, I have to listen to classical music. Okay, Sunlit, Texas, hello. Okay, all right. I think I said hi to everybody as much as I can. Okay, so I'm gonna get back to this. And then I think, what do you think? Um, maybe like a couple more minutes. Carol, you guys are still watching? You're amazing, I love you. People always watching so we have dinner, love it. And Kyle says, better than Bob Ross. I hope I'm better than Bob Ross. Um, and I don't, I don't have any happy little trees. Hi, Jody. You've seen country west of, hi, Rachel. Hi. Thanks for tuning in, everybody. I appreciate all your comments. And Jody, if you can hear me, you're good to tune in now. It took me a little while to, to kind of get my stride here. But I like how this cow is coming together. And I'm having fun talking to everybody, so... Oh, 
that looks a little pointy, doesn't it? Right here, don't you think? Hello from Australia. What? Hi. How are y'all doing down there? I did um, I did a fundraiser for you guys for your fires. Hold on, I'm gonna show you. It's really cool. I made these little stickers. So um, I'm gonna adopt some. It's a lot to sell stickers. So at the end of the day, like we're gonna get to adopt some koala bears. So I'm pretty excited about that. I have to do it. I have to do it this week actually, so. I'm gonna put some highlights, like where it's really white. I'm gonna put some highlights there. Ooh, that's not working. What do you think about that? There we go. So how many of you got how many of you live in the west? Do you, do you live in the west? Or do you live in different parts of the country? So I have to tell you a really cool thing that's um, been going on with one of the companies. I'm um, the artifacts, the ones with the the uh, copper panels. They're making hand sanitizer. Uh, they make they make paints, but they shut down production and they're making hand sanitizer and it's pretty awesome. I got to talk to them yesterday because um, I've been getting some different things in for some different projects and uh, and I got to learn that and I thought that was pretty nice because Hear what you're saying about Texas, Alberta, Canada, and California, Nico. That like all these places have Western like Western culture, you know. Um, I like that.
So I'm just picking out what I see like for highlights. See how I just gave him a little neck? There we go. So I had somebody ask me about traveling for my work, if I do or if I would, and absolutely. I had somebody contact me to do a commission. Hi Jake, how are you? Thanks for tuning in you guys. And it's definitely one of, it's definitely one of my goals, it's one of my dreams that I would get to go and document other people's places and um, document their ranches and their livestock and their animals and what, what the history of their place is. And it could be history that dates back to, you know, the last 100 or 200 or however, um, you know, 300 years um, that it's possibly been in a family or maybe it's a new, a new place that's just beginning. Um, so it's my dream that I would get to go to these different locations and go plant different landmarks and different um, different things on their place and paint some of the animals and the livestock or the people on there. So I would say, I'm just kind of circling back to that question about my inspiration. That's definitely an inspiration for me. Um, it's a goal for me. So, um, so I'm starting with these guys. Or actually, this is a lady longhorn. So I'm starting with these gals. I think I will get to travel more with my work. I've been getting uh, inquiries about traveling to places to do photo shoots with families, and um, that's definitely something I want to do. So, all right, you guys. I've had your attention for a really long time, and I certainly appreciate it. I hope you got to enjoy what I painted for you tonight. Um, I'd love to paint for you again sometime, so um, please don't hesitate to follow me on Instagram. I'm also on Facebook, but um, Boot Barn, Leia with Boot Barn, I really appreciated the invitation to come and paint for your audience tonight. Um, I enjoyed getting to make a little bit of progress on this gal back here, and uh, and that's it. So I appreciate the opportunity. It was a lot of fun. I hope I was able to get to everybody's questions. If you didn't, um, I'll go back through and see if I missed anything. And if I can respond to you, then I will. So, all right. Thanks again for tuning in. I appreciate all your time. I hope you're all staying safe and healthy and well out there. And um, stay six feet away or stay in your studio. If there's any passion projects that you've ever wanted to do, now is definitely a good time to do it. So, all right, you guys. Have a great night. Much love from Roundup, Montana. Bye-bye. Hi, Ben. Thanks for tuning in. That means a lot. So, all right. We'll see you. Bye-bye.